Hello and on behalf of New Irish Arts, welcome to Sanctuary. We hope you're being encouraged and blessed by these five days of artistic meditations for Holy Week with music and words from the members of New Irish Arts. You can catch up on any of the earlier editions on our YouTube channel if you'd like to do that. Today we're going to hear from our much-loved drummer Peter Comfort who recently became one of the pastors in Glen Mackin Church of God in Belfast. But first, let's hear some music. The room is prepared and the table is set and the guests have arrived. And one by one, each of the 12 disciples sits and reclines at the low table that has been prepared for the meal. But little do they know that this is the last time they will eat with Jesus. They soon will be eating the last supper together. They sit with Jesus, ready to eat and enjoy this meal together. The food is served. They begin to talk amongst one another. They perhaps continue to debate who is the greatest among them because that is just what they had been doing a few hours earlier. But Jesus was about to teach them about 
greatness, true greatness. He was about to give them an unforgettable lesson in humility and service. We find this account in chapter 13 of John's Gospel. And John tells us that after supper had ended, Jesus gets up from the table. He leaves the room. He leaves the twelve to continue talking as he disappears for just a moment. When he returns, it seems like he has removed his clothes and wrapped a towel around his waist. He also carries a basin, a basin filled with water. And John doesn't tell us how the disciples reacted to this sight of Jesus, wrapped in a towel and carrying this basin of water. But they would have had some idea of what was going on here. And at that moment, perhaps their eyes dropped down to their feet, perhaps to one another's feet. Filthy, dusty, dirty feet. Very bad manners. Very poor etiquette. You see, walking the dusty roads of Palestine in sandals meant that wherever you went, your feet got dirty. And whenever you entered a home to eat or to visit or to say hello, it was imperative that you washed your feet. No one wanted smelly, dirty feet walked all through their home. I wouldn't and I'm sure you wouldn't either. And in many of the homes throughout Palestine, it was the job of the lowliest servant, the lowliest slave, to wash the feet of the guests as they arrived. Would you want that task? Does it sound like something you would want to do? I doubt it. But someone had to do it. Understand that to sit, to recline at a table for a meal with others with dirty and dusty feet was just not acceptable. And every single one of these men had entered this place, walked straight past that basin of water set aside for washing. Not one of them stopped to clean their feet because I believe they were more concerned with getting as close to Jesus as possible at that supper table. But now Jesus was going to do for them what they should have done for him. They had an opportunity to serve him, but now he will serve them. There was no servant on hand to wash the feet. But none of the twelve would ever have thought to do that. None of them would stoop that low. But Jesus will. And he shows what it is to serve. John goes on to tell us that Jesus begins to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. Look, I don't have the words to describe the surprise and shock that would have went through the room at the sight of this. The disciples would have been simply stunned that Jesus, their rabbi, their Lord and their master would take on the role of this lowliest of servants. But in humility and condescension, Jesus kneels down before his closest twelve and begins to wash their feet. Stunned to silence. You could hear a pin drop. And as we already know, just a few hours before they were fighting amongst themselves as to who was the greatest. Who was the best? Who was the favourite? Well, what Jesus was doing right now, with the attitude that he had, it was in direct contrast with that of the disciples. But at least one of them said something. At least one of them spoke up. Peter, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Are you actually going to do this? Peter was extremely uncomfortable with what Jesus was about to do. Jesus responded, Peter, you don't understand what I'm doing, but someday you will. No, Peter protests, you will never wash my feet. I cannot allow this. Then Jesus says to Peter, Peter, unless I wash your feet, you have no part with me. You will not belong to me. Peter then, misunderstanding what Jesus is actually saying, begs Jesus to give him an all-over washing, a complete washing. Not only my feet, Lord, but my hands and my head too. Wash me all over. Jesus explains to Peter that someone who has been washed all over only needs to have his feet washed. You see, Peter and the disciples had already experienced a complete washing, the cleansing of salvation. They did not need to be washed again. And Jesus here is speaking of spiritual things, not of the natural. He used this situation to explain that salvation is a one-time event for those who follow him, justification by faith. But as the disciples would go through life, they would need to continually wash their feet, their spiritual feet, the process of sanctification. Muck and dirt and sin and wickedness and temptation that leaves a stain on the feet of those who are already justified and clean. It's an ongoing process of spiritual foot washing, dealing with the day in and day out sinful nature that we all carry as we walk through a dusty world. Temporal cleansing, that's the best way I can put it. 
And this truth is just one of several from this incredible event that we as Christians can apply to our own lives. Firstly, when we come to Christ in humility and repentance for the washing of our sins, we can be sure that it is permanent and it is complete. No act can cleanse us further from sin as our sin has been exchanged for the perfect righteousness of Christ, an event that would take place the very next day on a cross. But what we do need, what we all need, is that continual cleansing from the effects of living in the flesh in a sin-tainted world. This continual feet washing of sanctification is done by the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within us through the washing of water by the word. But in addition to this wonderful truth, after washing the feet of every disciple in that room, and don't forget including the feet of Judas who would soon betray him, he encouraged them. I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. As his followers, we are to emulate him and learn from him and take him as our example. We are to serve one another in humility and lowliness of heart and mind. We are called to build up one another in humility and in love. You see, when we seek to be the centre, when we seek to be the focal point, we displease the Lord who promised that true greatness in his kingdom is attained by those with a servant's heart. When we have that servant's heart, the Lord promised we will be greatly blessed. Meditate on these words that Jesus spoke here on earth. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. The very next day after he had washed the dirty feet of his disciples, he went to a cross and he gave his life as a ransom for many, for me and for you. He has cleansed you. He has washed you. Now he wants you to serve him in humility and he wants you to serve others. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. May Jesus be your example today.
Lord Jesus, we thank you that you were willing to humble yourself and become human, living alongside your disciples and serving them in the mundane task of feet washing. Your example inspires us to live lives of service and sacrifice. But we confess that we're not always willing to get our hands dirty. Help us to see how freely you gave everything you had so that we who have received freely might also freely give. Amen. Thank you to Peter, the New Irish Youth Choir and all the others who've enriched our time together in the sanctuary today. And thank you all of you for watching. Our next broadcast is available from early on Thursday morning. But until then, may the grace and peace of the Lord be with you.